Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. Subscribe to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ed Astra. So, let's go ahead and jump right, just right back into the crying game, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> it's all theatrics. What matters most now is taking the two of them down and getting Amicus up and out of front of that dungeon. Even now, I'm not really thinking about getting home, despite the fact that the strength of the stretch drive should be returning at any moment now. If it hasn't already. There are bigger things at stake here, the main one being my best friend's life. And that's why on the third day after the fake trial, I find myself eagerly involving myself in a discussion with Nefru when he tells me his plans. Kato is due back in the palace that day, and we both suspect he'll be making a trip to our room. So the most important thing to the wolves is drama. A scene. Something memorable. That's why that's all they seem to care about around here. Nefru sniffs dismissively as he sips at his wine. And I find myself starting to see why Amicus might find some might find him so irritating. Not that he's wrong, though, and I usually find myself agreeing with him. So, make a scene that makes Cato and Cassius look bad? Well, most importantly, we need to find or even make up information about them that will irreparably damage their reputation in the public sphere. Like what Cassius did to Amicus during the second trial? Efru smirks. Even worse than that, Killian. Preferably something that shows disloyalty or insults the pride of the wolves in general. That is something they often can't look past. Didn't Amicus having sex with you show disloyalty or hurt their pride? Nefru waves his paw dismissively in the air. No, it's been established amongst the public that he was simply furthering his goal of an alliance with my species, which was completely in line with his character. As for pride, well, he wasn't the one raising his tail. I sigh. So, we need something about Cassius and Cato that outs that's out of their character? Yes, something that shows them to be not who they say they are. The public must distrust them. Nefru strokes his chin. It would be convenient to have all that footage that Virginia was talking about, but considering how secure it might be, that could be impossible. Worth trying to get, though. Yes, I'll have to discuss that further with Virginia. So what should I be doing? Well, it feels good to talk about what can be done to help Amicus. I personally want to do something. Nefru pauses and smiles at me. Killian... My duty is not to put you in danger. As I've said, I won't have you... Well, I don't care. I need to help. I'll do whatever I have to do. Nefru raises an eyebrow at me. Oh, yes. Even if it might risk your own life, Kato was only barely tolerating the protective line that being a Kimian citizen affords you. I would not push him further. Then I'll do things behind the scenes. I don't care. I just want to do something. Nefru sighs deeply. We'll see. Just keep in mind that the most important thing to Amicus is that you stay alive. That's what you can do that will that's what you can do that will help him the most. I take that in. Still not fully convinced that there's nothing I can do. But I'll certainly let you know if I believe there's a way for you to help. As for me, my status leaves me untouchable, unless Cato wants to risk another war, which I guarantee you he does not. I'd imagine. He has first hand experience. Indeed. Nefru, Cato wishes to enter your quarters. Oh, oh. I jump, wondering if the walls are thin enough for the old wolf to have hurt us. Nefru doesn't seem surprised, though. Ah, as we expected. Come, please tell him to hold for a moment. I'm in the nude. Yes, Nefru. Nefru looks at me. I suppose our mission starts now. I have my own drone recording in the corner there, hopefully to catch the old man saying something incriminating. What I'd like you to do is crouch behind those bushes. Keep hidden and quiet. What? I thought I was supposed to be involved. You will be, but I'd rather not he filter himself because of you. I hesitate for a moment, for a second, and quickly do as I'm told, even though I do feel bitter at the feeling of being tossed aside once again. Neferu, I will override the security again if you do not! Kato's voice crackles over the speakers. That's when the jackal opens the door, and for a moment his voice comes from two places at once. I'm pretty well hidden behind a few trees and bushes. My surroundings dark enough that I'm pretty sure Kato wouldn't be able to see me through the leaves and twigs I'm peeking through. The two males stand awkwardly across from each other before Kato suddenly strides in, forcing the jackal to step aside, though Nefru keeps that smug smile on his face. What a pleasure it is for you to visit me today. As Kato walks in, I get a look at his face for the first time. Oh, shit. I'd seen that, I'd seen that he lacked his visor in the broadcast, but seeing it up close? The stern look I'd always imagined under his now-broken machinery is definitely there. His eyes have a milky gray quality to them, heavily scarred. The old wolf stops just in front of the fountain, his ears perked up high. I wonder if he can see anything at all, and Nefru asks just that. How's your sight, your former highness? I see one of those ears twitch before the wolf slowly turns around. Non-existent, young prince. 
Oh, please, just call me Nef. Where is the alien? Nefru pauses. Alex, or do you mean... You know damn well who I'm referring to, Jackal. Nefru raises his paw defensively, even though Kato can't see. Apologies, Kato. Killian told me he would be in the gardens doing landscaping work. Kato snorts. I didn't hear him out there. It is a rather large garden, a very beautiful one as well. Kato doesn't respond, instead staring, staring about the room. Would you like some wine? Nefru gestures at the bedside table, picking up his own goblet to the sip. I take a sip, loudly. I see Kato's ears twitch again before he turns to the jackal. What is your plan with the alien? Nefru frowns. Plan? Do not, and do not ever play games with me. That will be my only warning to you, jackal. Kato's voice is so cold and ominous that even Nefru's grin wavers. He recovers quickly, taking another loud slurp of wine. Hmm, such good wine. What are the few superior products your people produce? Now, as for Killian, I'm simply fulfilling a promise to Amicus. I see. That wasn't so hard to tell me, then, was it? Speaking of, quite astonishing that he was so easily beaten by Cassius, of all people. Quite. I wonder, how was he able to accomplish such a feat? It was broadcast. You should have, you would have been able to see it. Ah, well, I don't watch Ed Astron broadcasts. Too much melodrama and propaganda for my tastes. Pugnu is a combination of skill and luck, and is not always the strongest that wins. Of course, though I have to wonder, might any of that luck have been, well, manufactured? Kato was silent for a moment. Kato being silent is when you know that something is very wrong. Are you implying something, Jackal? Oh, no, I'm simply curious. I see the cats on the table looking at each other. I came, to study, I came to study the politics and workings of the Empire while also trying to improve relations between our species. I feel knowing all the facets of woven politics is important. Cato sneers. There's a fine line between studying and spying here. Nefru chuckles. Well, what, do I, what I do know is that you wolves often go about things in a theatrical fashion, and it's something hard to tell what's real or not. I assume the fight to be, well, somewhat staged. Hmph. Cato chuckles, and I immediately I know that Nefru is making a lot of mistakes here. I'm not sure what his plan is. Maybe he thought that Kato would be more friendly with him, or that he could flow the old wolf into a false sense of security somehow. Maybe he's just trying to feel the old man out. I also get the feeling that maybe he shouldn't have had all that wine before doing this. His suave, carefree attitude works on most, either to charm or to annoy, but Kato is not someone I feel it will work particularly well on. Either way, it's clear Kato knows exactly what's happening. I know Kimians pride themselves on their own intelligence, but I have to wonder why considering your extreme stupidity. Oh? Nefru casually sloshes his wine about in his goblet. Your arrogance amazes me, young one. I know you were fortunate enough to have been birthed after the war, but it's as if you were never taught the history between our peoples. I spent countless hours studying this history, Cato. That's mostly why I'm here. Mostly. It seems the rest of that reason is to fuck with the delicate balance our empire is currently in. Certainly not. I am merely an observer. I want to tell Nefru to shut up, just to tell Cato to go look for me out in the gardens or something. I can see the hackles on Kato's shoulder rise, and I can only hope that the jackal was right about being untouchable. I know I offered you to stay in this palace as long as you pleased. I never withdraw an offer without good reason. But have you thought of moving out to the city? There are many more accommodations out there. Ha! <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I much prefer it here. Everyone is so... interesting. <laughs> it is just like a Kimmy to take full advantage of a wolf's tolerance. Nefru quirks an eyebrow. Tolerance? Not a word I often associate with a wolf. I can tell that Nefru is losing his cool a bit. Our tolerance for your arrogance was unprecedented. Nefru seems confused for a moment. Oh, are you referring to the war? I'm sorry, we're quite a bit more blunt of where I'm from, so I do not realize what you're getting at. Shut up, Nefru! Stop running your mouth! Nefru smirks. For a moment, I thought you were coming on to me much like Amicus did. Definitely too much to drink, or this jackal's a lot crazier than I thought he was. You wolves tend to be aggressive like that! Yep. Kato becomes a blur, closing the five-foot distance between the two of them in less than a second. Yep. Damn. The next thing I know, Kato has the jackal up against one of the pillars, slamming Nefru so hard against it that I see the plaster crack and fall away. Nefru gasps loudly, kicking at Kato a few times as he struggles with the old wolf's thick arms. G get off! Nefru kicks out again, this time in Kato's groin. The old wolf felt anything, he doesn't show it, instead holding Nefru tightly in place while he snarls in his face. Speaking of tolerance, I have tolerated your arrogance for far too long. Just because you are the pharaoh's son, the second son, and of a ruler who has so little power over his kingdom in the first place. I shouldn't be surprised. Kato pulls Nefru forward, then slams him back against the pillar again, causing more plaster to fall and the jackal's teeth to clack together loud enough that I can hear it. You're all the fucking same, every single one of you, but somehow you're the worst I've yet to meet. Again, Kato slams Nefru against the pillar and I start to stand up, wishing I had a Nervo. Nefru growls, trying another kick. 
Is this the next generation of Kimmy and we must deal with? I know you weren't alive for the war, but it seems another one is inevitable if you're an example of what is to come. Nefru tries to speak, but lets out a choked cough. Hmm? Kato loosens his grasp on Nefru's ga ga so and Nefru gasps a few times. You know, Amicus was a bit less rough, but if you wanted to put your paws on me, you only had to- Oh my god, shut the fuck up, Nefru! <laughs> This time, Kato almost lifts the jackal off his feet, cutting Nefru off with a horrific gag while, like he's throwing up. I must say, you have a funny way of going about building an alliance. It's as if you thought tail raising would get you whatever you wanted. And Nefru really starts to struggle, kicking around aimlessly, throwing his head left and right, sending drool flinging from his muzzle. Kato doesn't relent, and I know this is my cue to do something. It's been a while since I've killed a jackal. My paws have been itching to do it again. Maybe you'll be, him, you'll be my next. I don't know what to do exactly. I have no weapon, but I wonder if maybe I can at least distract the wolf long enough for Nefru to get away, to breathe again. I surround my hiding spot, rustling the branches and leaves as I do. Kato is so focused on what he's doing to Nefru that it doesn't seem to ever even, even hear me. As I run at him, I can see the wolf grinning mine and maniacally into Nefru's face. Like this really is something he's been wanting to do for a very long time. He finally seems to hear me at the last second, turning his head in the direction before I lower my shoulder and try to tackle him off of Nefru. It's like hitting a brick wall covered in fur. I make contact with the old man's side, and for a moment I get a whiff of a musk and perfume before I'm sent right back down on my ass. I wonder for a moment if I've dislocated my shoulder. I look up to see in a day to see what result my attack might have had, if any. To my relief, I see Nefru open on his paws and knees, gagging and coughing, drool stringing from his muzzle. Kato was standing slightly to the side, looking in my direction, over my head, but he clearly knows where I am. He only focuses on me for a moment, though, then turns his head in the direction of the coughing jackal, Nefru crawling away at, his point, at this point. Kato makes his way towards him before drawing back a foot. He can only reach out, not even having enough time to ask Kato to stop before the wolf kicks the j Ah! He does it so hard that I see Nef Nefru's knees skip off the ground for a moment before he pitches face first into the marble, on his knees and clutching at himself as he let out a howl of agony. I cringe, immediately thinking of the time I kicked Amicus and how much harder Kato must have kicked Nefru. I start to move towards them again in case Kato thinks of doing anything else, but the old wolf simply stands there, breathing heavily, head tilted down as he listens to Nefru moan. For the kicks you gave me earlier, that should put your whoring out of commission for a few days, no? Nefru was curled up on his knees at this point, paws tucked into himself. It's at this point that I see a gush of red liquid overflow from his muzzle, and for one horrific moment I wonder if somehow Kato had kicked him so hard he'd ruptured his organs or something. But no, it's the wine, and it spills across the marble. Kato wrinkles his nose at the retching sounds before carefully stepping around the jackal. As I said, I won't withdraw my offer for you to stay. But there are many apartments open in the city. Just know that you will not be able to take your new citizen with you. Otherwise, I'd like to try this discussion again in the future, if you're willing to be more cooperative. With that, the old wolf stalks out of the bedroom. At the same time, two white drones float in, hovering above over Nefru. One lowers itself to the ground to begin cleaning up the mess, while the other holds out what looks like a couple of capsules on a plate, which it balances, uh, which it balances on a metal appendage. Nefru, you seem to have vomited. Would you like anti-nausea medication? I stumble over to the jackal to kneel at his side and try to help in any way I can. He simply keeps his eyes screwed shut, holding up a paw before returning it to his sore spot. Awkwardly, I rub at his shoulder, trying to ignore the smell as the drone does its work at cleaning up the puke. A few minutes later, I managed to help the jackal to the bed, his breath ragged the entire way. It's strange seeing him like this. Usually so confident and in control. I never expected anyone to do anything like this to him, but I guess if someone was going to do it, it was Kato. Are you sure you're okay? As for what's probably the third time as I sit next to him, and Ifra manages to smile despite the clear pain he's in. Uh, n n no, but I'll have to go to the physician, for sure. All the way in the city since Kato saw fit to imprison the palace doctor. Do you need, like, ice or something? I don't know, he hits you so fucking hard. I'll manage. I just miscalculated. I'll know how to handle him in the future. I frown, not really feeling like that's the case. As I'm trying to help him, though, Calm's voice comes over the intercom again. Virginia requests access to your room, Nefru. Nefru suddenly straightens up, moving his paws from his crotch to his thighs. Granted. She nods at the two of us before wrinkling her nose. Huh, smells like rancid wine in here. Indeed, what did you need, Virginia? To my surprise, Virginia turns to me. Instead of the hostile expression she'd been wearing the last she'd been wearing the last time we'd encountered each other, it's much kinder, much to my relief. Killian, I had a discussion with Cassius about seeing Amicus. He seems accepting of the idea under one condition. There's a pause. What? Well, he wishes to speak with you in private. Private? Nefru immediately speaks up next to me. That is not wise, Killian. We should negotiate with him to allow me to be there. Virginia laughs. You really think Cassius would allow a Kimian in on a private conversation? Virginia pauses, eyeing the jackal. Nefru currently still hunched up despite his attempts to keep straight. What happened to you? 
Nothing of note. I raise an eyebrow, which Virginia sees. Killian, what happened? Well... I pause, watching as Nefri raises his own eyebrow, but makes no attempt to stop me. Well, Nefri pissed off Kato, and, uh... Kato, uh... hurt him. What?! I was attempting to pry information from the old man but the stage tr about the stage trial. I was unsuccessful. Why did you even think you could be successful? Kato knows exactly what we're up to, no doubt. This is so unlike you. It jeopardizes everything, Neferu. Virginia seems completely bewildered. Now that I think about it, I have to agree. What's Neferu thinking? But then Virginia narrows her eyes as she sees the jackal grinning, now openly covering his crotch. What? Well, I may not have achieved exactly what I wanted, but I attained something just as valuable. If your glance is at the corner of the room where his drone is. You recorded it all? Yes, and an attack on the Pharaoh's son will not look very nice on the Kimian news channels, will it? Neferu. A dark tone enters the wolf's voice. That risks war. The jackal rolls his eyes, adjusting himself rather lewdly. I would never actually send it, but Cato does not know that. It's simply convenient blackmail material if things go don't go as planned. Virginia squeezes the bridge of her snout, closing her eyes. You don't know Cato very well, do you? And neither do I. Sometimes I believe he wants another war. Did he hit you? Virginia eyes, Virginia's eyes drift lower. Yes. Anyway, he's no longer the Emperor. It's Cassius I'd use it against. You know Cato is his advisor. But still not the Emperor. I would hope your brother has large enough stones, again the Jackal adjusts himself, to do his job and not listen to a warmongering advisor. One would hope... Virginia continues to look unconvinced. I shift around impatiently next to Neferu. So, did he want to see me now? Virginia turns to me, again looking as if she had forgotten that I was there. That seemed to be the case, Neferu sighs loudly. At least try to convince him to allow you to be present, Virginia. I don't want Killian to be left alone with him. There is little to worry about. Cass is not Cato, but I can try. Virginia looks to me. Ready, Killian? I quickly get up, following the wolf to the door. I look back at Neferu, the jackal looking uncharacteristically disheveled as he's still hunched up, uh, hunched, hunched up around his junk. He gives me a meaningful look, probably meant to tell me to be more careful, so I give him a quick nod before following the wolf out the door. We walk in silence, the only sound being the birds and the swishing of our robes as we make our way through the halls. I'm not sure exactly where we're going, but after a while I realize it must be to the throne room. I stare at the back of the she-wolf's head, contemplating a few things. Virginia is the person I know the least about in this palace, which probably means she's doing the best job at playing this little game. I want to ask her about a lot of things. But I'm worried about overstepping my boundaries. Something that seems rather easy to do with her. Alright, y'all, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and say a quick prayer for uh, Neferu's balls. They're going to need it. <laughs> but anyway, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!